What's happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam and this is Van City Audi. I have been given the immense privilege to speak to a representative from Shell Canada. I'm gonna go through a bunch of questions today and I'm hoping I can get a bunch of interesting answers for you all. If you'd like to take a second, please introduce yourself and let everyone know who you are. Thanks for that introduction. Uh, my name is Gerard Emblem. I'm the Fuels Marketing Manager for Shell Canada for our mobility business here. So what we'll do is we'll fire away, rapid fire succession. We'll see what kind of juicy details we can get out of them to get a bit more of an understanding of what's going on in the fuel industry, what we've seen being offered at the Shell stations around the lower mainland, that juicy V-Power Nitro Plus. So we'll start things off by asking you, what took so long? <laughs> We've seen 94 offerings from other fuel stations in the Lower Mainland for some time. We've never seen anything more than a 91 octane fuel from Shell. How come? Uh, thanks for that question, Adam. It's uh, very long and complex, but the short answer is supply chain. Um, Shell doesn't have a refinery in the Lower Mainland, so for us to get fuel there, it's, uh, it can be a challenge at times. Uh, I'll let you in a little bit of an industry secret. The closer you are to a refinery, the easier it is to control where those molecules go. So those offerings that you have, you know, call it a 94 and other, other competitors with a, with a 94 offering, um, they are much closer to the refineries, which allows them to introduce it at a much quicker and aggressive rate than, than we would. Um, for us, we've had to undertake a massive supply chain um, review, invest quite a bit of dollars, to ensure that we could offer a quality, high-performing product like Shell V Power Nitro Plus 93 to motorists in the Lower Mainland. We're happy he did. <laughs> Thank you for spending that money because it was appreciated. When did you first catch wind of the videos that I made in how Shell 91 was performing in the Lower Mainland? So it was uh, a couple of my friends who uh, are also motorheads uh, sent me your videos throughout COVID, you know, it was, was one of those evenings that they were just watching a number of YouTube videos and they stumbled across your channel and uh, they sent it over my way and tried to rub it in my face that uh, our product <laughs> wasn't performing. Um, so, so I did catch wind of it in, in, uh, through, throughout COVID um, and like I said in our, our, our call, it gave us the inspiration to develop a better product. You gave us the inspiration to make a better product. And obviously Shelby Power Nitro Plus 93. Um, it was an idea of ours for a number of years, and it's been in the works um, probably since 2018, 2018, wow. 2019. And we were just finding the right way to introduce it. Uh, one thing I do want to say is, is performance is measured, uh, there's many different ways to measure performance. And obviously you're looking for horsepower and torque. Um, ways that we measure performance is also engine efficiency. So our product, we focus a lot of our effort, research and development with Scuderia Ferrari, um, building a more efficient uh, or more, a better additive to provide better engine efficiency. Mm. So um, Shell V-Power Nitro Plus, if you didn't know, uh, contains protection against four major en engine threats uh, as what we call. So uh, protection against gunk or what other motorists may know as carbon deposits. Um, wear, friction, pretty, pretty simple to understand, mm. um, as well as corrosion. So, you know, these things that we're going to make, that we're going to protect your engine um, so that you have a, a viable engine in the long run. Is, is where we focus our efforts. But obviously now with the introduction of higher octane allows us to get further down that performance and add additional, um, our, uh, provide additional engine performance for, for, your, for your vehicles. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting best of both worlds. Not only do we have that wear and tear protection, but we also have the higher octane rating, which is allowing us to make substantially more horsepower and torque. Yeah, that's correct. Amazing. So the next thing I have for you is this new V-Power Nitro Plus comes in 91 and 93 octane uh, offerings at the new pumps. Is that a completely new formula, this V-Power Nitro Plus, or is it just simply like some additional ethanol added into your previous 91? Um, to answer that in a simple, in a simple way, we've, we've added 10% ethanol to our existing blend. Obviously, we had to make some adjustments to our base fuel. Um, we can't just add 10% ethanol and sell it as is. We yeah. have to make adjustments. The additives that we do add to our gasoline, which is unique and proprietary to Shell, remains the same. So we still provide the great benefits that Shell V Power Nitro Plus provided before we introduced Nitro Plus 93. Um, but we made adjustments to our base fuel and added the 10% ethanol to get to the 93 octane in our Shell V Power Nitro Plus 93 product. Very cool. 
So another one I have for Gerard is how much does the fuel that we see in the lower mainland differ from other provinces? Like there's other refineries, there's tons of gas stations across the country. Mm -hmm. How does ours differ from the other provinces? From a chemistry terms, they're, they're very similar across the board. Um, the government of Canada, which they have an, um, an agency called the, the, Canadian, the CGSB, the Canadian General Standards Board, they're a government agency that regulate the fuel, the specifications of many products, including gasoline. We have to meet this federal regulation at a minimum standard across the country. Hmm. There are some specific nuances, depending on where we are within the country, um, based on local regulations. So some pr uh, provincial governments may have um, more strict regulations in terms of, of, of carbon deposits, emissions controls, um, all of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, so there will be some s subtle differences, but for the, for the most part, um, the gasoline created across the country is the same. It just has to meet the minimum specification as outlined by the government. Hmm. So now that I know that each province might have slightly different um, levels that you need to maintain, is it fair to assume then that British Columbia has slightly stricter standards? Uh, because we've had this discussion, we'll say, in our community for a long time that our fuel in BC might not be as good as other provinces or as good. And when I say good, guys, I'm referring to how much power you can make. It's what I'm all about, what I always have been about. It's not about mileage. <laughs> it's not about <laughs> emissions. It's about how much power. Um, is it fair to say that BC is more strict than the other provinces? I would say BC does have um, a higher standard in terms of, of what is sold at the gasoline pump. And from an industry perspective, uh, it, at, at times it, it can be uh, a challenge to, to deliver a, a, a performing gasoline that mm. is available in the lower mainland. Um, like I said earlier, the closer you are to a refinery, the easier it is to, control, to control those molecules. Mm -hmm. So once you're, you know, if we take a look at Alberta, um, there's a lot more offerings in the market if, if you've, if you've, if yeah. you've traveled there. Um, we also have four refineries in the province of Alberta hmm. in the Edmonton area. So obviously Shell owns one of them. It's, it's, it's one of our largest in, in the world. Hmm. Um, and the closer you are to the refinery, the easier it is to, to provide those fuels because you have greater control of your supply chain. So in BC specifically, it can cause a little bit of challenges. There's, there's a lack of refining uh, capabilities. Um, the supply chains, you know, similar to COVID, uh, they're constraints, they're bottlenecked, aging infrastructure. So as we start to develop these new regulations, as the new regulations come out, the supply chain will adapt and we'll be able to offer different types of products. Cool. Very cool. So a big question that I frequently get asked on the channel is, Adam, what the hell's going on? V-Power Nitro Plus looks freaking amazing, but it's only available in the lower mainland right now. And I think it was last year... October or September, around that time that you rolled it out, where people started sending me all this, flooding my inboxes, uh, 93 octane from Shell, get on it and test it. Are we ever going to see this amazing fuel be available through all of BC? Uh, great question. Uh, we're actually already on Vancouver Island. So if you travel over to Victoria, a number of our stations already have v -Power, Shell V-Power Nitro Plus 93. That's there. amazing. And that's just recently, I think we just recently introduced it uh, about two months ago. Sick. Uh, we're actually in the, in the midst of rolling it out in Alberta, and we expect to have it at most of our locations later this summer. Uh, for our motorists in southern Ontario, they're also going to be able to see it. Uh, later, later this year, mm -hmm. and hopefully to the province of Quebec, where we again, it's it's all driven by supply chain. Uh, a lot that we have to do to to upgrade and integrate this into our supply chain. Um, but we do expect to see this in, in more regions across Canada as time progresses. Um, some areas much easier to do than other areas. Uh, Interior BC specifically, I know you asked about that. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's going to take some time, uh, but but at one point we do hope to get there with our our latest fuel offering. Amazing. So it's not just going to be the lower mainland. Alberta's going to have it. So you guys that are asking me and watching my channel across Canada, first of all, thank you for tuning in. Secondly, you're going to get the pretty much the identical fuel that we have. Maybe subtle nuances, but you're going to be able to experience the same amount of power and torque that I get out of my cars using this V-Power Nitro Plus. All right, I got one final question for him because I've been wondering myself. We're at the Canadian Grand Prix. You guys were kind enough to invite me out here. 
We're about to watch some epic F1 racing, and I want to know the fuel that they use in F1 cars. How similar is it to what we get at the pumps? We got this, this V-Power Nitro Plus stamped all over behind us. How close is that formula that we see in our cars, that I'm using in my cars, how close is it in these F1 cars? It's nearly identical, actually. Wow. So it's uh, the Shell V-Power race fuel that is used by the Scuderia Ferrari race team contains 99% of the same types of compounds found at the Shell V-Power that you can purchase at any Shell gasoline station across the world. That's very, very impressive. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, this year in Formula One, they've actually introduced uh, a 10% ethanol blend, which is also the same amount of ethanol that you could find in our products. Um, in our gasoline products at a Shell retail station. That's cool. I think when I first tested it, it was about seven and a half that I first did a manual test. Another time, eight. Other people sent me their tests. It was 10. So it's definitely high up there at that maximum 10% level. That's correct. Very, very cool stuff. Well, thank you so much for giving me your time today, Gerard. This was awesome. I never thought that I'd have the opportunity to hear what's really going on behind closed doors with Shell Canada, how it operates, why we have the fuel that we have, and why they brought it to BC, and hopefully soon across all of Canada. Cross your fingers, guys. Some provinces, we're getting it for sure. Other ones, hopefully you guys are lucky enough to be able to enjoy it as well. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. Thank you for your time, Gerard. Thanks, Sam. Until next time, guys, take care.